Hi, chapter 7, section 7 is on positive rational exponents and kind of where we're going is going to be doing some things like these here where we have a fraction in the exponent but always a positive number. So 4 to the 3 halves, 64 to the 2 thirds and so on. Uh, as we do these, don't want you to get in the habit of always using a calculator because then sometimes if you have variables to fractional exponents you can't do that. Um, uh, this index card thing here on the right hand side, I should have passed that out in class, otherwise it'll be coming tomorrow. You might want to keep this up on your computer as you do some of the homework, might make it a little bit easier. Uh, being able to do these in your head though is important. We're going to do some stuff in class that uh, if you don't know how to do it in your head, uh, yeah, it'll become apparent really soon. Uh, but we're going to start with kind of some low balls like 2 squared. Uh, 2 squared you probably know in your head, but if you notice I have all my squared powers here and the start of the second column, and I have my third powers, my fourth powers, my fifth powers, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so these are going to be the numbers that we most often are using. It's a lot of the smaller ones. But if you have two squared, you can go to your squared column and see that two squared is four. Uh, going back to an earlier section, if you have four to the one half, hopefully you remember that when you have a one over two, that's saying, well, what squared is four, or what to the second power is four. So then you could look at your second powered column, see, well, ah, 4 is here, so it has to be 2 squared is 4. Uh, same thing would work here with the 25, 25 to the 1 half power, that's supposed to be an exponent, superscript written up above. So you could say, well, what squared is 25? Go over here to your perfect squares. We have the 25, so then you see the answer is 5. That's 5 squared is 25. Now, when we have a 343 to the 1 third, the only difference is we're saying what to the third power, so we can't use our perfect square columns. We need to jump over here to the third power, these, because we're saying what to the third power is 343. So we look till we find 343 right here, and the answer has to be a 7, because this is saying, like I said in the earlier section, what times itself times itself is 343. So 7 to the third is 343. This one here, now we have it in two steps. So we're saying inside the parentheses, what squared is 9? Well, then that would be what squared is 9. Okay, that's 3 over here. So we have a 3. Now we still need to take care of the 3 as an exponent, so 3 to the 3rd. If you don't know that, you jump over to your third power column. 3 to the 3rd is 27. So then this one here would equal 27. And the point that I'm trying to make is if you go back to your uh, exponent properties, when you have a power to a power, uh, we multiplied those. So if you have 1 half times 3, that's going to be the same as 9 to the 3 halves. So if you have something like this, a 9 to the 3 over 2 power, you could take and break it up as though it's 9 to the 1 half. That keeps your 2 in the denominator. And then the 3 is the exponent, I guess you call it the power. Um, or you could break it up the other way if you wanted to, and you could say, well, that's the same as 9 to the third, and then the square root of all of that. If you're doing it this way, though, it's most often not going to fit on your index card. I just don't have numbers going that high. 9 to the third is 729, and my highest perfect square was 400. So, all right, let's write out what we're doing. Uh, so if you have, uh, maybe I'll just write it out for that last one. Put it in red for dramatic emphasis. So if you have a 9 to the 3 halves, and I'll just say that the numerator here, um, that really means it's saying it's like it's 2 this power. And I'm putting power in the exclamation mark because technically the 3 halves is the whole exponent. Uh, but we're going to take it to the third power. The 2, the denominator, the bottom of the fraction, that's really saying that it's this root. This root. Um, and the comment that I was trying to make before, it's usually easiest to do this first. If you're going to do them in two steps, if you do the root first, it'll make the number smaller. You're more likely to and numbers are just more manageable. Okay, so let's jump and do several more of these and then we're done with this section. So if you have 4 to the 3 halves, you could look at it as though that's 4 to the 1 half. 
take care of the root first, then that to the third. Well, that's saying what squared is 4. If it doesn't jump out at you like I hope it does, you say, well, that's 2, because 2 squared is 4. Now we have a 2 to the third. So we jump over to our third power column, and 2 to the third is 8. So that one there then is going to be 8. All right, let's do another one. So next I have 64 to the 2 thirds. Well, you could say that's the same as 64 to the 1 third. Then that's going to be squared. Since we're doing the cube root first, the third root, we jump over here to our third power column. We say, well, what to the third is 64? And that's going to be a 4. So then we have a 4 squared. And if you don't know that one, then you fly over to your squared column. Perfect squares. So you see 4 squared is 16. The next one, all right, 81 to the 3 halves. You could do the 2 first. So 81 to the 1 half. And that to the third power. So what squared is 81? Jump over here and you see that it's a 9. So that takes care of everything inside the parentheses. We're just left with a 9 to the third. So then I go over to my third power column. 9 to the third is 729. And takes care of that one. The next one, 343. So 343 to the 2 thirds, so 343, that'd be, let's do the root first. So 343 to the 1 third, and then we'll square that one. So 343 to the 1 third, so look in our third power column, we find it right there, so that's a 7. And we still have the square of the 7, so 7 squared is 49. So final answer, 49. The next one, uh, 1296, 1296 to the 2 fourths. We'll do the fourth root first. And then we'll square it. So now we have to jump over to the far right on the index card. We're saying what to the fourth power, so we're here in our fourth power column, is 1296, and that's 6. So this then becomes 6 squared. And 6 squared, then, is 36. And very last one, we have 64 to the 5 thirds. So 64 to the 1 third, we'll do the cubed root. And then take that to the 5th power. Let's see. So now cubed root, let me get rid of my markings over here. And so third power, okay, we have our 64 there, so it's going to be a 4, and that's what's inside the parentheses, so now we have a 4 to the 5th, and down here in the lower right we have our 5th power, so that's 1,024. All right, one final thing I wanted to make a comment about. As I went through and did these problems, I did them either in blue or green. Uh, the significance wasn't supposed to be every other and I screwed up. If you look, the exponent is larger than 1 every time I did blue. So here we started with 4, ended with an 8, started with 81, ended with 729, started with 64, ended with 1024. So the point I'm trying to make there is we could say, let's jump to a different color, when exponents are, I'll do my little colon, uh, greater than 1, why not, I'll stick with the blue, uh, why not, stick with the blue. When exponents are greater than 1, comma, the answer is larger than the base, And when the exponents are less than 1, which would be my green ones, so much for the color scheme. Let's go back and redo it. When exponents are less than 1, the answer is smaller 
than the base. And that's all I have from section 7.